Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description. You get all my information. Discord's pretty cool if you want to join that. And I do all these premium problems on Patreon. Also hit me up on GitHub. Um, you are uh, given two arrays. I don't like hit me up. So forget I said that. But it's, that was just bothering me. Sorry. This is called Next Grader Element 1. Uh, you're given two arrays, and there's no duplicates, so they're all unique values in the arrays. Nums1 and Nums2, where Nums1 elements are a subset of Nums2 elements. So 4, 1, and 2 are automatically going to be, you know, the Nums1 elements are a subset of these elements, right? So you can see 4, 1, and 2 are found in Nums2, uh, 4, 1, and 2, but, you know, not in the, they don't have to be in the same indices, it's just a subset of the elements. So what we want to do is find the next greater numbers for num1's elements in the corresponding places of num2's elements. Uh, and what is the next greater element? That means the next greater number of a number x in nums1 is the first greater number to its right in nums2. So basically what they're saying is if we look through this list, we want to find for 4, we want to find the next greater element in this list. So there is none. And it has to be to the right of 4 in this list. And there's nothing greater than 4, so we have to put negative 1. If it does not exist, negative 1. When we look at 1 in this list, in nums, from nums1, when we look at 1 in nums2, there are next greater elements, right? And the next greatest 1 to the right is 3. So we put 3. Uh, for 2, we look in the next list. There's nothing to the right of 2, so it's negative 1 again. There's nothing. Okay, let's go through one more example. When we look at 2 in this list, the next greatest one is 3. When we look at 4 in this list, there's nothing to the right, so we put negative 1. Hopefully you understand it now. Um, so what are the solutions? How do we solve this? Um, intuitively, I would say that... Uh, I also say intuitively a lot, a lot, so I should stop saying that so much. But um, just brute force-wise, you would think, okay, well, let's loop through this. Well, you're going to have to loop through the arrays no matter what, but let's loop through this... And then let's do a nested loop through this and then just find the next greatest one to the right, right? Uh, and then make like an output array. That is a solution. That's brute force though. And it's pretty slow. There's a better way to do this. And you can use things. Uh, you can use data structures. So what we're going to use to solve this problem is a stack and a hash map. The hash map is going to keep track of it's gonna. We're gonna loop through this nums2 array, and we're just gonna build a hash map up with, um, uh, you know, the number, each number, and its next greatest element, even if the number doesn't exist. So like three doesn't exist in nums1, but we're gonna find whatever that we're gonna say. Oh, we'll put three, and the next greatest number is four in the hash map. So we're just gonna loop through this array, build a hash map, and then at the end we'll loop through this array do lookups into the hash map in return we'll be like oh we look in the hash map what's four is next greatest element oh there's nothing so it's negative one there you go so that's it you're going to build a hash map we're also going to use a stack to help us but i'll explain that in a second so let's just start off by initializing our hash map it's going to be in the integer the current integer and then another integer that represents the next greatest element so we could call this hash map next greatest equal new hash map okay great um, and then we're going to have a stack. Like I said, we'll talk about this in a second. We'll just call it stack for now. New stack. And we're going to be looping through nums2 at first to build this hash map, like I just said. So we're going to go integer for integer nums, num in nums2. We're going to say, okay, um, stack dot push num. So we're going to be pushing these numbers onto a stack as we loop through. And we're going to do a check each time. This is how we're putting them in the hash map. And I'll explain it right after I write this. If the stack is not empty, this is the main part of the whole problem. This is the only hard part. If the stack is not empty and stack.peak is less than num, we're going to put the value into the hash map. Next greatest dot put. And we're going to put... Um, stack dot pop. So we're going to pop off the stack. And then we're going to put num. So let's walk through what this means. We're looping through this array and we want to build this hash map with the next greatest elements, right? We're going to put the number onto the stack. So when the stack's empty, we're going to put a number onto the stack, right? So we would put one onto the stack. So right in this example right here, let's just grab this so we can look at the example. We're going to 
have our stack equal to this, right? So our stack, we're gonna put one on it at first, right? The stack's not empty, so we're looping through the numbers, we're looping through all these numbers. So let's just put one onto the stack right now. Now the stack isn't empty, and we're gonna be looking at three. And we're gonna say, okay, the stack's not empty anymore, and is stack.peak, is one less than three? Yes, one is less than three. So we found the next greatest element. If whatever's in the stack is less than the current number, then we found the next greatest element. Um, so you could see we would do, uh, we would pop this element off. So we take the one off and we would do map.put and we would put that one and the next greatest element into the hash map. Then the stack gets pushed on the three value. And then we repeat the process where we say, okay, now we check, is three less than num? Okay, three is less than, and we're on four, so three is less than four. So we say, okay, three is less than four, so we found the next greatest to three. So we say, mapped up, put three, and then four. And we keep doing this, and then we put, and we, you know, we popped three off of the stack. And then four goes onto the stack, etc. So that's how it works. And... Here's the only change you have to make. This is pretty much like the solution because we build our hash map, right? So the hash map is going to be built after this point. And what we want to do is we want to loop through now. We want to loop through nums1 because the hash map is built. And we just want to say um, we want to reconstruct nums1. So we have to output this array with all the next greater values. So we might as well just modify. Instead of making a new array, let's just modify the old array. So we just say nums1 is equal to, you know, next greatest dot get or default. Get or default. So if the number has a value for nums1 of i, so if the current element, so when we look at 4, we're going to say, okay, does 4 in the hash map have a next greater element? Ne if it doesn't, well, it defaults to negative 1. And then after that, you just return nums1 array because it'll be reconstructed to have all the next greater elements. This is the solution, but... This isn't the full solution. This isn't going to work because we have to make this a while loop. So why do we have to make this a while loop? We have to make this a while loop because of decreasing elements. Um, let's say that the array looks something like this when we want to construct our hash map. If it's 1, 3, 4, 5, or, you know, uh, sorry, there's no duplicates, so we could do... 8, 7, 6, 5, and then 10. Look at this. So let's say this is our array. If we wanted to construct our hash map, we need to make sure that we are not putting the... Uh, th this isn't going to work. We're just going to keep pushing things onto the stack. If we make this a while loop, this is going to work because... We're going to be putting things onto the stack, and this condition will never trigger because stack.peak won't be less than num. For example, when we get to, you know, 8 goes onto the stack. And then is stack.peak less than 7? No, 8 isn't less than 7. So we keep we put 7 on, then we put 6 on, then we put 5 on. So it's just a stack with all these values. But once we see a 10, and we see that stack.peak is less than num now we just keep popping off those stacks and we put into the hash map every single value because you'll notice that all decree if it's a row of decreasing values followed by an increased value it will put the every single one of these indexes the next greater value put into the hash map is going to be 10 so five's next greatest is 10 six next greatest is 10 seven's eight so we need a while loop to pop all of those off to the stack off of the stack and put that next greatest value in so that's the whole problem uh pretty straightforward we could run it make sure it's all good uh let me know if you guys have any questions about this it's not too difficult to understand but i mean it's a little bit of a trick for uh an easy problem you know but uh, I don't think it's too difficult. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll be glad to answer them. And uh, yeah, definitely thank you guys for watching. I'm going to continue going. I guess there's Next Greatest Element 2 as well and some other ones. I do think they throw you off with these um, two arrays because in some of them I've seen it looks like there's, uh, you know, some extra. Um, I mean, some with just one array. So, all right. Uh, and that's what we kind of do. We just ignore the first array, honestly. So, all right. See you guys in the next one.